Uh, by Matt Kurtzer. Forgive and forget. Vietnam is now just a glossy photograph of the American Journal. But my photographs can't be touched up. The memories don't erase that easily. When I stumble across a photograph of my best friend and I look into his eyes, I know that forgetting is totally out of the question. Now just a fading yellow photograph shuffled among a myriad of others. He lays somewhere in a drawer, doomed not to be found on purpose or often. Its playful facade of structural posing could never fit in a gilded frame or live on a prominent shelf. As a trophy, it would just belie the scourge of his ripping flesh. His smile would twist into the maddening pain of the ordeal of a slow death. No, I don't think that I'll ever put up his picture. Regardless, I'll always remember that he must have been brave in those last hours. Brave, but not a hero. Heroes are too hard to define if they exist at all. None of us were heroes. We just did it. Whatever it was, whatever it took, to accomplish the mission, to live through it, to help others to do the same, to get back home, home the way it was, to be boys again in the reassuring warmth and safety of the afterglow of the 50s and early 60s, daydreaming of a bull-nosed Chevy drag racing down a dark country road after the football game. We had no clue that Ozzy and Harry had got lost in the shuffle. In the stupor of our ignorance, we could still numb the horror of the war by daydreaming of home the way it was. Bruce Howard Bumgarner was a non-stop daydream of home to me. Being an Alpha Company, we only got together when our respective units came into the base camp from the field. During those times, we all tried to kill the beast within us by drowning it in alcohol sticking needles in its skin, smoking it, fucking it to death, fighting it fist to cuffs, gambling with it, or any combination of the above. Bruce and I liked to mellow out by smoking a little herb, going down to the whorehouse, smoking some more, cleaning up for chow, smoking, and talking about home, and ending up at the service club drinking one beer all night finding ourselves on our hands and knees, trying to make it back to the barracks. The occasional mortar attacks were merely a disturbance that had to be tolerated. We shared our pot and innermost thoughts like brothers, and after the pot, we shared stories of our girls, our cars, and our lives back home. The pot was awesome. After a while, it was just like being home. But it was more than the pot, and we were more than just friends. We were each other's lifeline, back to the real world. So when I left the country, three weeks before him, he died. SSG Willie Tate told me that just two weeks after I left the country, Bum spent the better part of a night bleeding to death in some shithole corner of the Boiloy Woods. As it started to get dark, a sniper took him down, blowing off part of his left shoulder. Bum screamed for a medic, but when the medic tried to reach him, the sniper shot the medic between the eyes. For the rest of the night they could hear him, but no one could reach him. Where was his mind as he cried and bled in the darkness? What were his thoughts before he finally fell silent as dawn approached, and all of his blood laid on the thirsty jungle floor, our guys pinned down around him? Was he thinking of home? Was he holding on to the thought of meeting me at Christmas in San Francisco like we had planned? Or was he imagining me calling his house, asking to speak to him, and his dad sobbing on the phone? What was he thinking in those long hours of torturous pain? Was he thinking of me back in the world he used to know? Thinking of it, I could smell the rotting jungle vegetation in my nostrils. I can feel that cold, damp dew all over me. I can just barely make out the limp, useless arm still attached, laying next to him in the moonlit clearing. 
I can feel from the essence of my soul, deep in the truth of my heart, that had I been there, he would have lived, or I also would have died. For the rest of my life, I'll be crawling through that thicket, trying to reach him.